Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of operations to move all balls to each box. Today's actually New Year's Eve and instead of going out, I'm recording this for you guys out of the kindness of my heart. I'm just kidding, I'd probably be sitting here in my room anyway. But this problem, before we get into it, I'm gonna briefly go over the brute force solution, which I don't think is super difficult to come up with, but the optimization is definitely difficult if you're not familiar with the pattern behind this problem. By the time I explain it to you, you're probably gonna think, damn, Neat Code, you're a genius. How could you have ever came up with that? And then I'm gonna tell you exactly how I knew how to do this optimization, because it's something, honestly, you can learn yourself as well. Suppose we're given a input string like this. That's the only input to the problem. What we want to do is create an output array of the same length. And to fill in each of these, we need to know what this represents. Like each of these spots, first of all, is a box. A zero tells us that there's exactly zero balls in the box. A one tells us that there's exactly one ball in the box. So that's just what this means. Now, why did they give us a string rather than an array of integers? I don't know. Sometimes they do this just to kind of trip you up. So just keep that in mind that this is a string. We'll have to do the conversions. But for each of these spots, all we want to do is count how many moves it would take to move all of the balls. So this ball, this ball, and this ball over here. So the number of moves is counted like this. One, two. And for uh, this guy, it's going to be one, two, three, four. And for this guy, it's probably going to be however much that was plus one, because this is just one to the right of that. We're already building some intuition for the problem just by doing that, just by showing you that the number of moves for that is just take that and you add one to get the number of moves for this. We're already building the intuition. But anyways, now we know what the problem means. So in this case, uh, for this example, I believe uh, this would have been three plus uh, five, or sorry, this is two plus four plus five. I think that's 11 moves total. So then we'd put on 11 over here. Now, how many moves is it gonna be for this guy? Well, already building the intuition, probably since we had three balls, we had to move all of them over to this point, and then each of those balls had to be moved one time each. There were three balls, so probably it's just going to be 11 minus 3, building a little bit of the intuition just by going over an example. So it's going to be 8 here. And for this guy, it's going to be 5. And it's going to get a little bit more complicated for these guys because uh, for this position to move all the balls here, now I have to move one here, one there, and then two jumps there, so that's going to be a 4. And uh, for this guy, it's going to be two and then one. The ball's already here, like this ball's already there. So that's going to be three moves total. And then for this guy, it's going to be one and then two. Or actually, I think that's three. That's one, two, three. So it's going to be four over here. I went over the example. We built a little bit of intuition for the problem, but that's probably not enough to actually fully optimize it. But I think it's pretty clear that a brute force solution to this problem would be an n squared solution, and it wouldn't be insane to implement that. I'm not going to do that, but I'll show you that some of the intuition behind the brute force can lead you to the optimal solution. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on that whole repeated work element that I briefly discussed as we were populating this. So what exactly would the brute force solution look like? Well, to fill in, let's say, this spot, we scan over everything else. Every time we see a 1, we just calculate the distance. Let's call that index J, and let's call this index I. You just take the difference between uh, I and J, and you could get the absolute value of that, or you could just somehow make sure you take the bigger index and subtract the smaller one from it. And then you'd add that to the current value that we are trying to populate. So let me do that. We know that this is the answer here. I'll leave that there, but I'm actually going to fill in a new array at the same time. Initially, like you can assume that these are all zeros. And so what we do with the brute force is for this one, we'll add a two. This one will add the four. This one will add a five. These are like the distances from here. So we'll get an 11 here doing that. By doing it from here, we'll get the same thing as we got here. We'll get an eight doing that. And then same exact thing from here. We'll never count the current value. We don't really care about it. 
whether it's a zero or a one, it's not relevant. It doesn't change the number of moves. So we only care about everything to the right of it. So that would have given us a five over here. Now, this is the part where things go wrong. Because now if I do it from here, with these sort of nested loops, we're only looking at everything to the right of it. So what we're going to end up filling for here is going to be, okay, this one, that's a one. This one, it's a two. These are the distances. Add them together, we get a three here. But it should have been a four. We missed everything to the left of it. It was fine when we were over here because everything to the left was zero. But now we're over here, there's a one to the left, and we missed it. So what's the solution? It's true that... The solution is actually pretty easy. You could have just started our outer pointer, let's say at index zero, and also start the inner pointer J also at index zero. We don't need to start to the right. We can start from the left. And then even if we got here and there was a one, then the distance J minus I would have been zero anyway. So that zero wouldn't have changed the answer. And technically that solution would work. Technically it's an N squared solution, but there's actually another way to do it as well. And I guess that will give you the intuition for the more optimal solution. So uh, for now, I'm just going to put a three over here. And then for this guy, I'm going to see to the right, there's a one. I'm going to add one. I'm going to put a one over here. And then for this, nothing is to the right of it. So I put a zero over here. So there's a bit of a mismatch here specifically for this portion. What can I do to fix it? Well, I can iterate in reverse order. So for this, now I can see what is everything to the left of it. Because what we were doing on our first pass from left to right is we were saying, okay, for this guy, get all the balls that are to the right of it and then tell me how many moves it would take. And now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna say for this guy, tell me all the balls to the left of it and tell me how many moves it would take to do that. The sum of those, the left plus the right part should tell us the solution. So very quickly, I'll put one more array down here. And then uh, for this guy, I'll say, okay, that's one move. And then this one is going to be three moves. So I'll take one plus three and that's a four. I'll put a four over here for this guy. There's only one ball to the left of it and it's two spots away. So I'll add a two over here for this guy. There's one ball to the left and it's a distance of one. I'll put a one over here. And then for this, nothing is to the left of it. Same thing for all of these. So I'm just going to quickly put some zeros over here. Now the sum of these two arrays should give us the array over here. Now, how is this going to help you arrive at the optimal solution? Well, let's try to identify very quickly the repeated work, which we kind of already did at the beginning of the problem. So I will uh, show that to you now. First of all, do you notice something about these two arrays? Do you notice how this one is strictly decreasing? And it could have been equal as well, like adjacent elements possibly could have been equal. I think that would only occur when they are zeros. But this one is decreasing. This one is increasing. Why is that? Because of the repeated work. If it took me one move to move all the balls that were here, and there was only a single one of them, to this spot, so we're counting the number of balls, let's say that's zero, and the total number of moves that it took to get to this spot, I guess, was one. And sorry, I think the number of balls was one in this case, uh, to the left of it, then total number of moves then to get here is going to be one. Then how can I fill in the next value over here? This two, how do I know what the next value is going to be? Can both of these allow me to figure that out? Yes, they can. I have exactly one ball. It took this many moves to move all the balls from the left here. So I know that at minimum, this is the value that's going to be here plus the number of balls because then I need to take all of those balls that are currently here and move each of them by one to be at this spot now. So by taking the sum of these two, we can figure out the value that's going to be over here. And then we can update these variables accordingly. How are we going to do that? Well, as we're scanning from left to right, we realize that the total number of moves that are here is now two. So of course, we're going to update the total number of moves to now be two. And we saw that here, there happened to be a one. So we know that this ball is also going to need to be moved to the right. So we should increment the number of balls as well. Coincidentally, they're both two right now. That's not always going to be the case. But this tells us it took two moves to move all the balls over here. That's why there's a two here. And there are two balls now. So the total number of moves to move all the balls here is going to be the sum of these two, which is going to be four. So then we would update our total number of moves, which is now going to be four. 
and the total number of balls, since there was a ball here, we'll increment this by one, it'll now be three. And if we were uh, moving them to another spot now, we would have taken the sum of these two, that would have been seven. This is just one pass of our algorithm. We're taking everything from the left and moving it to the right. We're eliminating the repeated work by counting the number of balls and moves, but we'll have to do the same thing in reverse order to get all of uh, these values over here. So very quickly, let me show you the dry run now. I just have this here. This is the correct answer just to make sure I don't have any issues or bugs, but this thing is gonna be all zeros. We're not going to need any more data structures. I'm only going to do this with one array. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say I'm here. I got zero balls and zero moves so far. That's my initial state. Okay, so how many moves is it going to take to take all the balls that we've already seen to be in this position from the left? Well, it's going to be the sum of these two, and it's going to be zero. Since this is a zero, we don't need to increment the number of balls. And since this is zero, the total number of moves is also going to be zero. Now I'm here, this is a zero again, so nothing's gonna happen. Once again, we're gonna put a zero here. These aren't gonna change. This is a one now, so it's gonna get more interesting, but the total number of moves to move all of these here is gonna be the sum of these two. It's still zero, but now we can increment the number of balls because we see a ball here. So this is now gonna be one. So now for this guy, we take the sum of these two. So it takes one move to take all of these balls and move it here. And then we can now take this and place it here. We wanna do that first. And then we can update the number of balls, which is not gonna change because there's a zero here. And now for this spot, take the sum of these two, it's gonna be a two. That tells me it took this two moves to move there. And now this can be placed over here. It took two moves to move all the balls over here from the left. And since this is a one, we can also increment the number of balls. And then finally, we'll finish it off like this with a four. And now we're done going from left to right. So now how are we gonna do the opposite and fill in the moves it's gonna take for each position to get all the balls from the right added there as well? Well, pretty much the exact same thing. We're actually gonna reinitialize our variable. So balls is gonna be set to zero, moves is gonna be set to zero again. And this is how it's gonna work. We're here, total number of moves from the right is gonna be the sum of these two. And instead of placing the value here now, we're gonna add that value here. We don't wanna overwrite this value. So this is gonna not change now. And now we're gonna be over here. But before we do that, we did see a ball over here. So we should have at least incremented the total number of balls, it's one. And you might be thinking, well, why didn't I take this value and then move it over here to total number of moves? Because right now we wanna count how much it took from the right. We actually don't want to replace this with the total number of moves that it took going from the left. So in actuality, the way the number of moves is gonna be updated is just by taking the sum of these two. But we have to take the sum of these two before we update the total number of balls because this number of moves should just keep track of what the previous number we added to that spot was. We added a zero and thus this should stay zero, even though there is a ball in that position. So now we're here, take the sum of these two, it's one, add that there. So now this is gonna be a three. We added a one to this spot. So we're gonna take uh, this and replace it with a one. We see there's a ball in this spot. So we're gonna add one here, this is two now. We've seen two balls and it took one move to move all the balls from the right over here. So thus it should take two plus one moves to move all those balls over here. And we will add that three uh, to this spot, making this a four. Since we added three here, the total number of moves is gonna be replaced with three, which was the sum of those two values. And since this is a zero, the number of balls can stay that. I'll quickly go through the rest of this, adding these two, it's five. So we get a five over here. This will be replaced with five. There's a ball here. This will be replaced with three over here. Sum these up, it's eight. This will now be replaced with an eight. There's no ball here. So now once again, sum these two, replace this with 11. And now we're done. You can see we do have the correct output. We were able to do this in two passes. There might be a way to code it up with just a single loop, but the total amount of work isn't really gonna change. It's still a linear time solution. Since we usually don't count the output space as additional space, technically this is a constant space solution. We're not using any unnecessary data structures. So let's code it up. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention the reason that I was able to solve this problem so easily is because it's pretty much exactly the same as another very fundamental problem I've solved before. And I've solved this problem several times, I think. 
it's pretty much the exact same problem. The brute force is n squared. You can then optimize it using like prefix and suffixes. And you actually don't even need those extra data structures. With the most optimal solution, you can get it down to constant space. So I promise you, I wasn't able to do this because I'm a genius. It's only because I've practiced this problem before. So I'm going to code this up by initializing the array of all zeros I was talking about. It's going to be the same length as the input. And then we're going to have those two variables, balls and moves, both initially zero. And then we're going to go from left to right. I'm going to keep track of the index because we're going to need the index when we update this array. So let's uh, do that. And then how do we update the current position? We just take the number of balls and moves and add them together. And that'll tell us the value that's going to go here. And we're going to do the same thing when we go in reverse order. So I'll actually just write that code out here. And before I forget, I do want to explicitly mention that, okay, first of all, let me just go in reverse order. It's very easy in Python. You just go from left to right, and then you just take that iterator and reverse it with this reversed call. And then result of I, as I said, it's going to be the same, just take balls and moves. But remember, on the second iteration, we want to take these and add them to the current value, not overwrite them. And you could do the same thing here since it just starts out as zero. But that's unnecessary, so I guess I'll just do this. More specifically now, going from left to right, how do we update the number of balls and moves? Well, you might naively think to do it this way. First of all, balls, it can be added one if the current position is a ball, or it can be added zero otherwise. That can be handled very easily just like this. Since that value itself is one or zero, you can just take that value and add it. Don't forget to convert it into an integer. That's the first point. The second point is, can you tell me what's wrong with this code? I updated the number of balls. Updating the number of moves is just taking the current number of moves and adding the current number of balls because each of those balls now is going to be have to move one step further. So that's how we can update the number of moves. The problem with this is we need to update the number of moves before the number of balls. Because what we want to know, this moves should represent the value that we took here and added to the result. But if we update the number of balls first, then this value can become different than the value up here. So all I'm going to do here is just swap both of these. Once you figure that out, it's the exact same down here. When you're going in reverse order, nothing changes. So all you do is just copy and paste that code. So this is pretty much the whole code. What we can do at the end is just return the result. And now you can see it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io and definitely check out that problem 238 I was talking about. I promise you it'll make your life easier. That problem is, in my opinion, in some ways more simple than this one. In some ways, I guess it's more complicated too.